Welcome back to The Science Behind. Today we're taking a closer look at something you've probably seen in just about every single reef tank. The deep blue light. You know the one. It makes certain corals glow like neon signs and it can turn the whole aquarium into something almost otherworldly. But here's the thing. I've always wondered why? Surely there's more to it than just making the corals look pretty. I mean, if you've ever shopped for reef lighting, you'll know that there are entire fixtures dedicated to producing very specific shades of blue. That can't be just for Instagram photos, right? So in this episode, we're going to break down the real science behind the blue light in reef tanks, how light changes as it travels through seawater, what that means for coral and the algae living inside them, and why blue wavelengths play such a big role in both coral health and the way we see them. So, let's get into it. Alright, so let's start with the basics. When sunlight hits the ocean, it doesn't just travel straight down unchanged. Water isn't perfectly clear, it absorbs and scatters different wavelengths of light at different rates. And the first colors to disappear are the longer wavelengths, like red, orange and most of the yellow as well. That means that even in relatively shallow water, you start losing those warm tones pretty quickly. By around 5 to 10 meters in the ocean, red is basically gone. Orange will fade not long after, and then what's left? Shorter wavelengths, especially blue, and to a lesser extent violet as well, these penetrate much deeper because they're scattered less and they are absorbed more slowly. This is why when you look at underwater footage from a dive, everything looks increasingly blue the deeper you go. The light reaching corals in nature is already filtered by the water above them, so they're living in an environment dominating by those cooler wavelengths as well. And the key point here is that corals have adapted over millions of years to use the light that's actually available in their natural habitat. Hobbyists sometimes put it simply, the deeper you go, the more white and yellow spectrum gets filtered out, and blue and violet penetrates further. That's what most coral is acclimated to as well. So when we light our reef tanks heavily in the blue range, we're not just making the tank look like it's underwater, we're actually recreating the same spectral conditions that corals have naturally evolved under. It's about matching the quality of light they get in the reef, not just the quantity. Now that we know why blue light is the dominant wavelength underwater, Let's talk about why it matters so much to corals, and the tiny partners that actually lives inside the corals. Because corals aren't just animals. Inside their tissues lives microscopic algae called zooanthellae. More specifically, dinoflagellates of the genus Symbiodinium. These algae have a symbiotic relationship with their coral hosts. The coral provides them with a safe home and access to sunlight, and in return, the zooanthellae use that light to perform photosynthesis. Here's the key in that. The pigments inside the zooanthellae, primarily chlorophyll A and chlorophyll C2, along with accessory pigments like pyridinin, are tuned to absorb light most efficiently in the blue spectrum, especially between about 400 and 500 nanometers. That's exactly the range that penetrates seawater the best. When they photosynthesize, the zooanthellae produce sugars, lipids and amino acids. These become the coral's primary food source, providing the majority of the energy it needs for growth, reproduction and also basic survival. But blue light does more than just power the photosynthesis. It can also influence how quickly corals build their skeletons. Research has shown that blue wavelengths help stimulate the coral's calcification process, encouraging the deposition of calcium carbonate at growth centers. Over time, this means stronger, denser skeletons that can better withstand the physical stresses of life on a reef. 
So when reef keepers choose to light their tanks heavily in the blue range, they're not just trying to mimic nature for the sake of realism. They're actually giving the Suanthele the exact wavelength they evolved to use and supporting both the coral's energy supply and its skeletal growth as well. So this is the part that really grabs people's attention, the glow. Under that deep blue light, certain corals can actually light up like neon signs. Bright greens, fiery oranges, even electric pinks sometimes. And no, it's not even some kind of paint or a trick. It's rooted in pure biology. So what actually is happening is called fluorescence. Corals have special proteins, fluorescent proteins, that take in high energy light, usually in the blue or near UV range, and then re-emit it at a longer wavelength that our eyes see as a completely different color. So when that blue light hits, your coral might suddenly blaze with green or red, because it's converting light we barely even notice into light we can see so vividly. But here's the thing. It's actually not just for show. Scientists think that this glow plays a few important roles. First, it can help the coral's algae, the suanthellae, by converting certain wavelengths into ones that are easier for photosynthesis. More usable light means more sugars for the coral. Second, it can act like sunscreen, absorbing and safely releasing excess light energy before it can damage the coral's tissue or the algae's photosynthetic machinery. And third, some of these fluorescent proteins have antioxidant properties, which can help neutralize harmful molecules that build up under stress. You can kind of see it as the coral's built-in immune system. Out on the reef, these benefits can actually mean the difference between a coral thriving or bleaching under intense sunlight. In our aquariums, they still serve those purposes, but we also get the bonus of that jaw-dropping glow. So while we might love fluorescence for how it looks, for the coral, it's about survival. It's beauty with a job to do, you can say. So now let's talk about a term you've either heard a lot if you're deep into reef keeping or maybe never hurt at all if you're new to it, actinic. In the aquarium world, actinic light usually refers to light in the deep blue to violet range, right around 420 nanometers. This sits squarely in that sweet spot for coral photosynthesis and fluorescence, but it comes with another perk that's actually pretty handy in a reef tank. It can actually help with algae control, and here's why. Many nuisance algae species, things like hair algae, film algae, diatoms as well, are actually less efficient at using predominantly blue light for photosynthesis. They tend to thrive when there's more of the red and yellow part of the spectrum available. So by leaning your lighting heavily toward actinic blue, you make life a little harder for those problem algae while still giving your corals exactly what they need. And for the corals, Actinic light is kind of a double win. It fuels the suanthellae inside them for growth, and it also triggers their fluorescent pigments. So you get both healthy corals and that incredible glow which we talked about in the earlier chapter. That's why a lot of reef aquarists will run strong blue light for most of the day, sometimes even mixing in whiter light for viewing, but then returning it to actinic blue in the mornings, evening, or even as a moonlight setting. It's actually not just for the looks, it's about creating the conditions that favor corals over nuisance algaes. So what does this all mean for your own reef tank? Let's take the science we've covered and turn it into something you can actually use. If you want to give your coral the best possible light, Aim for a good spread across the blue spectrum, somewhere between 400 and 500 nanometers. And if you can, include a touch of violet right around 420. That range gives you the most bang for your buck when it comes to coral photosynthesis and the fluorescent pop. Now, does this apply to all corals? 
pretty much yes, but there is some nuance in this. Both hard corals and most of the soft corals host zoanthellae, and those algae are most efficient in blue light. The real difference isn't the color of light that they need, it's how much. SPS corals from bright, shallow reefs usually want stronger light overall. Soft corals from more shaded or deeper spots can thrive under lower intensity, but they're still using mostly blue wavelengths. But here's the thing. What if you're not into that deep blue look? Some reef keepers just prefer a more natural daylight spectrum. And you can actually still keep a perfectly healthy reef but you do want to be a bit more selective about your corals. You should go for species that don't depend on heavy blue lighting for their color. Things like leathers, toadstools, and other certain LPS corals. Or you should pick species from a shallower, high sun habitat that will still show well under whiter light. The trade-off is that when you move away from a blue heavy spectrum, Nuisance algae get a bit of a head start. Red and yellow light are like fuel for many algae species, so you may have to be more proactive with nutrient control and general maintenance. So you can think of it like this. Blue light makes it easier to match what most corals evolved with and to keep algae in check. If you skip it, it's not the end of the world. You just need to choose your livestock carefully and be ready for a bit extra work that might come with that decision. So, to quickly recap, blue light isn't just about making your corals glow. It's the part of the spectrum that actually makes it down through seawater in nature and it's the wavelength rave that Suanthele have evolved to use most efficiently for photosynthesis. It can boost both coral growth help build stronger skeletons, trigger those stunning fluorescent colors, and even give you a bit of an advantage against nuisance algae. We've also talked about how this applies to all types of corals, both hard and soft, with the main difference being how much light they need overall, not just the color of the lighting. And if the all blue look isn't your style, you can still keep a thriving reef with white light. You'll just need to pick corals that suit that lighting and stay on top of LG control as well. At the end of the day, it comes back to one of my favorite points in this hobby, understanding the why that lets you make better decisions for your own setup. Whether you run a deep blue spectrum, a more natural daylight look or something in between, the important thing is to know what your corals actually need and why you're giving it to them. Thanks for watching today's episode of The Science Behind. If you've got your own thoughts on the blue light or you've tried different lighting setups and seen how your colors respond, tell me about it in the comments. And if you've got an idea for a future episode of The Science Behind, send it my way. I'm always looking for great topics to dive into. See you next time.